comfortable 2-0 win and driven very much by this man, uh, Romelu Lukaku, who commanded a fee of 98 million quid. Danny, we'll get to Sam in a second, but when you look at it, I mean, can one, as I said in the introduction, can one signing single-handedly really tilt the title balance in Chelsea's favour like this? Well, I think you can never know for sure. Um, obviously, the the when 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 Van Dijk came and Alisson Tsugi, but mostly Van Dijk came to Liverpool. The the general consensus was that he was the the missing link, um, and it proved that what it proved to be the case. Mm. What we can't know at the end of this season if if Chelsea hadn't signed Lukaku, whether they'd be competitive anyway, because we all thought they would be even without him. One thing is for sure is that um, having him there is hugely beneficial for the club and for the the other players around him because it gives them another option gives them strength they didn't have he's uh, he's a terrific footballer yeah. and he's a goal scorer so is he impossible to defend against it seems no, that no, way nobody's impossible to where defend you, where, well where maybe you, Messi where do, you, where do you start with Lukaku though you've got to be bright you've got to be intelligent you don't fight him you pick your moments to nip in front drop off you need a screen sometimes you need a help they didn't scream very well at all the Arsenal boys so you just got to, and and, the, and stopping the ball into him as often as you can and make them go wide. You know you'll see a lot of teams when they play Chelsea now fill that central area with two holding midfield players and, and not what Arsenal's mistake was. Their, their midfield boys were getting tempted to go out and press yeah. and leave big gaps into Lukaku's feet. Whereas if you don't get tempted to press and just sit in front of him, then they have to do something else. Chelsea's great advantage is that they're not they won't be reliant on Lukaku. They've got superb players all over. All the around them. Yeah. So it's it's a it's a great string they've added to the belt and uh it was a great start for him. He's 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 a terrific as I say, a terrific player and they're gonna be there. They'll be there or thereabouts. I bet you don't think it, it tilts the title in their direction big time. You don't go it, with that, you it, don't go fully with that. It makes them more it makes them more competitive and I think it makes them more capable of winning the title with him in it, but I still think that Liverpool or City will win it. OK, because the man sitting opposite mm. you thinks anyone that finishes above Chelsea will yeah, win it. I think that's right. I think it was a perfect day, a perfect game for him to make a debut in because Arsenal defensive all over the place. Mm. And I think you, I don't think he'll do the same things to Virgil van Dijk that he did um, yeah. you know, yesterday to yeah. the Arsenal defence. I mean, the goal itself was was great spin-off and layoff, but it's the central defender going back wanting to fall over and not having the strength to be able to, to defend against him was, was something you could argue against. Look, I mean, he gives them more options, doesn't he? He gives people another thought process because now they've got a bona fide, legitimate, nailed-on goal scorer that mm. will give you more fear than perhaps they've had in previous versions of Chelsea. And even mm. the previous versions of Chelsea were pr- particularly compelling. But Chelsea give you this, op- uh, this set of options now that they haven't had because Timo Werner hasn't been able to, to, to produce goals in the way that they anticipated he might. But you look at Chelsea and you look at Arsenal, Arsenal can take something from that game. They didn't get the doing that perhaps they could have got. And I think Martin Keown, whilst getting as splintered as he possibly could on Friday, on, on fences that he was residing on, was, <laughs> was you know slightly concerned about that. I mean, Arsenal put out a better performance in the second half. And I think there's an element of Chelsea had won the game in the first half anyway, so yeah. you can often get away with that sort of mentality. Mm. They also, they are depleted. Is. So I don't think we can judge Arsenal. I mean, it, they've started by beat, getting beat by Brentford, so that starts a narrative. Hmm. I'd ask Martin on Friday, do, it's not a pass, but will there be an expectation from the Arsenal fans they're going to get on his back if they get beat by Chelsea? And it will always be the manner of the defeat, because I, I think most people would have expected, given the lineups, given a debut coming in place for a £98 million centre-forward and everything that Chelsea are currently doing, that they probably would have beat the balance of probability they would have probably beaten Arsenal. It's about how they beat them. Hmm. I, look at, I look at him and think... Yeah, we'll see. Perfect debut against a lightweight central defensive partnership against a lightweight Arsenal right now. We will see how he plays against better defensive partnerships, against a better, more robust side than well, Arsenal like currently Saturday are. Saturday against Liverpool. And that will be yeah. the litmus test to some extent as to where Chelsea are, where they aren't. But I do go back to my original position that I think that anybody finishes above Chelsea mm. will win the league. And I'm not sure anybody will finish above Chelsea and there's as much to do with who they're signing about who sits in their dugout mm. I think the guy that sits in their dugout is the blueprint for modern day management Jim White and Simon Jordan Monday to Thursday morning 10 till 1 on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker TalkSport